A properly sized and chosen cleanup crew will likely make the difference between you staying in the hobby from three to five years and beyond or quitting within the first year. Namaskaram to all of you newbies and pros alike. My name is Matthew. I am your BRS beginner guru. Welcome to episode 39 in the beginner how-to guide for saltwater aquariums and reef tanks. Everything you wanted to know, well, probably not everything. Well, maybe for some of you a little bit too much, but a lot of information today about cleanup crews. Here's a picture of my first ever saltwater tank on the day I gave up on it. No joke. I broke down this tank, I think this day or the next day. That's green hair algae and it is everywhere. And I couldn't understand at the time how my test kits for nitrate and phosphates were coming up zero and I still had such a big algae outbreak. Fast forward several years and what I've come to learn is, okay, I obviously didn't understand nitrates and phosphates, but I also didn't understand the importance and how a cleanup crew worked. Let's get started with the most obvious question, what is a cleanup crew? A cleanup crew is a collection of invertebrates and fish that you specifically add to your tank to help control algae and detritus buildup. A cleanup crew helps nuisance algae from getting out of control and it also helps keeps your nitrates, your phosphates, and your ammonia levels low. Here are the primary members of a cleanup crew. First up, you have your algae eating snails. Some popular examples of these are the trochus, turbo, astrea, nerite, and margarita snail. Then you have your carnivorous snails, such as your serith, nasarius, and bumblebee snails. Thirdly, you have your algae eating crabs, the most famous of which is the emerald crab. Then you have your omnivorous crabs, and these are just various species of hermit crabs that will eat all sorts of different things in your tank. Then you have your cleaner shrimp, such as your skunk cleaner or your blood red fire cleaner. Then you have your close relative of the snail, and this is the conch or the conch. Different pronunciations depending on different parts of the country. These are great omnivores, but they also help keep your sand bed aerated. And lastly, there are all sorts of fish that are great for a cleanup crew. You have your sand sifting goby, your algae eating blenny, and of course the ever popular tang. So now we know the basics of what can make up a cleanup crew, but what exactly do cleanup crews clean? Well, first and foremost, they clean algae. They're really good at cleaning film algae on the glass, diatoms on your rock work or your sand bed, and some forms of nuisance algae as well, like bubble algae, but oftentimes cleanup crew members won't touch things like green hair algae or biopsis. Well, we know they clean up algae, but they're also really good at cleaning up fish waste excrement, poop, if you will. Now, I'm not saying the cleanup crew members will actively go and consume poop because that's actually kind of gross and there's probably not a whole bunch of nutritional value in the poop, but a lot of cleanup crew members will help aerate the sand bed. And when they aerate that sand bed, they can knock loose that waste, which helps it float up in the water column. And if it stays in the water column long enough, it will go into the overflow and get pulled out by your mechanical filtration. The third thing that cleanup crews clean is food. Whenever you feed your tank, whatever you feed your tank, a lot of times that food will settle into nooks and crannies and crevices or just sit on the sand bed and there are cleanup crew members that will hunt down that food and consume it. That way that food won't have a chance to break down into ammonia, nitrates, or phosphates so they can help keep those numbers down. And the fourth thing that cleanup crews clean, dead livestock. It happens all the time. Snails die, small fish dies, Oftentimes you can see that death and then you can get in there and remove it before it has a chance to break down. But sometimes they die in an area and you cannot find them. Whether a small fish or a snail dies and you just can't remove it or you can't find it, there are cleanup crew members that will help remove the decaying matter. All right, so where does a cleanup crew clean? They pretty much clean anywhere you put them. They'll clean the rock work, they'll clean the sand bed, they'll clean the glass. If you put them in a sump, they'll clean the sump. If you put some of them in a rear filtration chamber, they'll clean the rear filtration chamber. Wherever you put them, they're gonna clean it. But even though cleanup crews are amazing, I counted four things at least that I could think of that cleanup crews aren't good at. 
First up, cleanup crews will likely not consume large amounts of nuisance algae. Once you see nuisance algae, usually the cleanup crew won't touch it. Number two, a cleanup crew cannot eliminate the need for you to scrape the glass or clean the sand bed. They can definitely help you keep those items clean, but you're still gonna have to get in and do some work yourself. Number three, a cleanup crew cannot remove all film algae from your glass. Even the best cleanup crew members will do their best and you can see their scrape marks, but they can't get all the algae. And lastly, a cleanup crew cannot prevent nuisance algae growth from occurring in tanks that have high nitrates and high phosphates. While there are a ton of good cleanup crew members out there, there are at least three categories of cleanup crew members that you should avoid, especially as a beginner. First up are starfish. These can be really tricky to keep in a home aquarium. But that being said, there are certain kinds of starfish and brittle stars that can be good cleanup crew members. If you have a large enough aquarium, you could rely on a sand sifting starfish to help keep your sand bed clean, but you would only want that if your aquarium is big enough to support that starfish. We're probably talking 70 gallons plus. And then you have brittle stars, which aren't exactly starfish, but they look very similar. They can be fantastic to clean in little nooks and crannies in the rock work. And they can also remove detritus from the sand bed. The second type of clean up crew member that I think beginners should avoid are sea urchins. Now let me be honest here, sea urchins can be a fantastic addition to your tank, but they can be tricky for beginners. First of all, sea urchins are bulldozers. They are so good at knocking over your aquascape. Most sea urchins are herbivores and they are good at cleaning. They they will wander around your rock work and around the glass scraping up algae, but there are certain species that are omnivores and can help clean up detritus as well. They can be a great addition, don't get me wrong, I would just stay away from them if you're a true beginner. And the third type of cleanup crew that I think beginners should avoid, and this one I don't think beginners should even think about trying, we're talking about sea cucumbers, sea slugs. These are expert only. They are gorgeous. If you've ever gone to your local fish store or scuba dove, Scuba dived, scuba, scuba dove, scuba dive. If you've ever gone to your local fish store or gone scuba diving, some of these are so pretty. Their colors are gorgeous. But what happens is if they are not kept in a well-stocked tank, and if you don't recognize the signs when they're about to die, oftentimes when they die, they can release poisons throughout your tank, wiping out everything. So while they can be really good filter feeders, if you're a beginner, stay away from these expert only for sure. Moving on to the common beginner mistakes regarding cleanup crews. The first mistake is adding too much too soon. If you have a brand new tank, there likely isn't a whole bunch of algae growth. And if you add in a ton of snails or crabs or whatever else, they will likely starve. A better option is to add a small amount at a time. And as you notice the cleanup crew not able to keep up, then just add a few more. It's better to add too few at the beginning than too many at the beginning, because if you have a large amount of die off at the beginning, then you're gonna have all sorts of problems with swings of your ammonia, nitrates, and phosphates. Mistake number two is the exact opposite, too little, too late. On the other hand, if you wait too long and the algae gets an upper hand, there may be areas of nuisance algae that you could have controlled early on if you had an appropriate size cleanup crew. So it is a little bit difficult to wade right through the middle between too little and too much, but it's probably better to start with too few and then just keep adding as you need them. Mistake number three is expecting too much from a cleanup crew. A cleanup crew is not some sort of magical recipe that if you get it just right, you will keep your hands out of the tank and you're not gonna have to do maintenance. That's just not how it works. Cleanup crews can definitely help you keep your tank clean, but even the best cleanup crew will still require you to get your hands wet and clean the tank. And common beginner mistake number four is not replenishing your cleanup crew over time. Cleanup crew members will die for various reasons and a lot of these species don't have long lifespans. So if you had a cleanup crew at the beginning but that's it, you will notice over time that as they die off, there's gonna be more algae growth, more nuisance algae growth, more buildup of detritus,
detritus and waste. So you're going to need to replace various members of the cleanup crew as your tank ages. The next question is when do I add a cleanup crew? I'm going to give you my personal opinion and if you disagree and I'm sure many of you will disagree, put a comment down below and let us know why so that beginners can make the decision for themselves. Personally, I like to wait to add a cleanup crew until algae starts growing, and that's almost always diatoms. Once I know that there's a food source, then I'll go out and I'll buy my first small cleanup crew to help tackle that. Okay, I think that's most of the, the pre-things that I wanted to cover. Now I want to give you our recommendations for a cleanup crew. Again, remember, my name is Matthew. I am your beginner guru, not your expert guru. So we are going to consider that you are a beginner and you have a small tank between 20 and 40 gallons. It's important to note that because I'm not going to be recommending things like tangs because tangs, even though they are fantastic cleanup crew members, will require a larger tank. So we're gonna get you started out with 10 total snails. We're gonna do five herbivorous snails and five carnivorous snails. For your algae eating snails, I'd have a few recommendations. I have found turbo snails, trochus snails, Astria snails, Nerai snails, and Margarita snails to all work really well. If you can find trochus snails, they do cost a little more, but hobbyists love trochus snails because when they fall on their back, they can right themselves, but most of the other snails can't do that, so you're gonna have to go in with tweezers or with your hand and flip them back whenever they fall over. I also like getting a mixture of the larger and smaller snails. For example, nerite snails are great. Because of their small size, they're able to clean algae in smaller nooks and crannies in your rock work than say a trochus snail or a turbo snail. Then you're gonna get five carnivorous snails. My favorites are Nasarius and Sarah snails. These are like zombie snails because they will live in your substrate and they will come out usually at nighttime or whenever you feed the tank. They're fantastic at consuming unwanted fish food, fish waste, and they're also there in case something dies. They'll help consume that as well. But as a bonus, they will help aerate your sand bed. Okay, so you've bought your 10 snails. Now we're gonna pick up 10 hermit crabs. There are all sorts of hermit crabs out there, but I recommend buying the really small red or blue legged hermit crabs. Their size is really important because they're so small, they'll be able to climb all around your rock work and pull out food, decaying matter, detritus from little tiny nooks and crannies, which is really important and things that snails just can't do. Thirdly, pick up one conch. These are fantastic at aerating the sand bed and also cleaning algae from lower on your rock work and lower parts of the glass. Next up, you want to get one cleaner shrimp and I recommend getting either a blood red fire shrimp or a Hawaiian skunk cleaner shrimp. They will eat meaty foods anywhere in the tank, so they are great additions to cleanup crews. What about fish? That's a big question because fish are absolutely an important part of your cleanup crew, but my recommendations for beginners is just wait a bit here. If you have a larger tank, let's say 70 gallons or more, then adding a tang is a fantastic idea, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you supplement the tang's diet with nori or something like Hikari Seaweed Extreme. Then you have sand sifting gobies. They are fantastic, they're fun to watch, and they clean your sand bed better than any other cleanup crew member out there. But if you put a sand sifting goby in a tank too early or a tank that's too small, you may run into some challenges. Yes, my sand sifting goby will come out and eat large meaty pieces of food, but that's not what they're supposed to be eating. That's not what their bodies are meant to eat. Really, what they're meant to do is pull out little tiny small things of food from the sand bed. So if you add in a sand sifting goby to a tank that's too small or you add it in too early, you're gonna have to train that goby by supplementally feeding it with small things like rotifers or calanus. And then you have your algae eating blennies. Fantastic, fantastic, but you're probably gonna need to wait at least six months. I know I haven't followed that advice in the past and there was just not enough algae for the blenny to graze on, so I watched it slowly starve to death. I even tried feeding it some nori or some sort of algae pellets, but it just wouldn't take it. So while an algae eating blenny can absolutely be a great addition, my recommendation would be to wait six months until there is enough algae on the rock work and the glass and know that you may have to 
supplementally feed them. So figuring out what they like will be really helpful. Please remember that this is just our recommendation for beginners starting out. You're absolutely gonna have to make adjustments for your tank. If you notice a lot of algae buildup, then maybe it's time to pick up some more algae eating snails. Or let's say you find some pockets of decaying food. Well, maybe it's a time to add more hermit crabs or more carnivorous snails or maybe even another cleaner shrimp. For more information about Cleanup Cruise, I wrote a blog several years ago, and we will put a link to it down below. Coming up in next episode, episode 40, I can't believe we're into the 40s. It is all about those pesky maintenance tasks that you will have to complete in those first few months of a new tank. And as always, everybody, thank you for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.